Hi, this is Frode, and welcome back to Actualize Notes TV. Today we have another great book, Make It Stick, by Peter Brown, Henry Rodiger, and Mark McDaniel. Make It Stick, subtitle, The Science of Successful Learning. Peter Brown is a storyteller, and uh, Henry Rodiger and Mark McDaniel are cognitive scientists who have teamed together to uh, write this book on uh, helping us learn how we can make things stick, what we learned that is. And if you want to make your learning come alive and really remember what you learn instead of just letting it wither away and you won't be able to recall it, then this book is a wise choice. Now we will have a look at five of my favorite big ideas from the book and your mission will be, should you choose to accept it, to ref uh, ask yourself the question, what, uh, what idea can I apply to my life? And your second mission will be to be on the lookout for which ideas really resonate with you. That will help you learn and put these ideas into action. Let's begin with the first one, rereading. Have you ever been using the strategy uh, before a test uh, of, uh, in school of rereading lecture notes? Rereading the text in the books, your high highlights and rereading your notes and then discovered on the test that you couldn't recall any of it. You, couldn't really, you didn't really remember it. Well, uh, even though we think that rereading text is like burning information into our mind, it really isn't. And uh, the, uh, the reason that rereading text is uh, so ineffective is um, there are actually three reasons. The first one is that it takes a lot of time because you have to read it through all of this text. Next, you create the illusion of having mastered the material. And uh, thirdly, we have... Actually, I cannot recall it. I will look in the notes. Excuse me. There we have it. Yes. A third one is you won't actually be able to remember what it is that you're learning. This is a brain, in case you can't see it. Not a very good writer at this point, uh, draw, draw to this point. So rereading takes a lot of time, it gives you the illusion of knowing what you learn because it gets easier and you feel familiar with the information. And you won't remember what you read, as you might have noticed on text, tests. And uh, Barbara Oakley echoes the wisdom of rereading in her book, A Mind for Numbers. He, she basically says the same thing, that re reading is really ineffective. People study their, uh, people reread their highlights, their notes, and passages and lists of terms, but they can't really recall it on tests. So what is the cure? Instead of doing rereading and wasting our time, we don't want to remember something. It's the testing effect, or what researchers call re Retrieval practice. So uh, to help you remember this idea, you can imagine... Uh, we remember images much better than words. So you can imagine pulling a book or a ton of information straight out of your brain. That gives you a better idea of what this idea is all about. And uh, to uh, get a picture of the testing effect, you can imagine a flight simulator where you're all immersed in the experience and you have no notes of what you're going to do. You are just tested and you have to keep the, your plane in flight versus a PowerPoint presentation, which is incredibly boring and you might not learn a lot because you can't just passively sit there and think that the information will fall into your mind but you're not really recalling anything of what you have learned. Whereas in the flight simulator, you must have learned something and be able to recall it in order to perform the right actions. And uh, the uh, testing effect, the two major benefits is that you are able, when you retrieve something, you are able to recall uh, what it is you're able to distinguish between what you know and what you don't know. What you know is the book and not, and then you're able to focus all of your efforts on what it is that you don't yet know and are able to recall. 
And that uh, is much better than wasting your time rereading everything. And second point is that when every time you recall something out of your mind without looking at notes or your books, the connections in your brain strengthens and uh, your mind can re your memory is reconsolidated. So you're also able to connect it to more things that you already know. So that's the testing effect and how can we use it? Simply, while we are reading, we can ask ourselves questions. We can stop, put the book down and close it and ask ourselves, what are the key ideas here? What are the main principles that I need to learn? And simply trying to recall it will strengthen your memory. And even though you can't recall it and have to check it, you will also kind of open a slot in your brain, which will then get filled and increase your chances of being able to recall it the next time. You can imagine yourself asking the question while you're in a packed parking lot, where is there an empty slot? And then immediately when you find an empty slot or somebody drives out of their slot, you will fill that slot. Same with asking ourselves questions and uh, getting answers through the text. That's the testing effect. Recall what you learn through retrieval practice. And by the way, when I'm on walks, I often ask myself, what are the key ideas from, for example, make it stick? Well, they are elaboration, they are retrieval practice, they are rereading, they are varied practice, and so on. And how do they connect to other authors? I also ask myself, how could you use the testing effect? Better than rereading. So varied practice, as I mentioned. What is varied practice? Best way to describe it is through an illustration. There, um, the authors talk about a study, an experiment, of uh, eight-year-old kids who were uh, split into two different groups. They were going to toss bean bags. So one group tossed bean bags only on a three feet mark. Three feet. And the other group between uh, two and four feet marks. And uh, they did the, this for a while, and then they were tested on who could hit the three feet mark most of the time. And uh, in, uh, as opposed to what we might think, that the, those who had practiced on the three feet mark would be best and hit that most of the time, those who practiced on the two to four feet mark, who varied their practice between several distances, actually were much better at hitting the three feet mark than those who had practiced on the three feet mark, done the same thing over and over again. And they also tried this with um, uh, baseball players. They asked the baseball players, what do you wanna, how do you wanna practice? Do you wanna get uh, specific throws again and again and again, 15 fastballs, 15 curveballs, 15 changeups, or do you want us to mix it up so you don't know what's coming? So the group that got the, knew what was coming they seemed to be much better in practice, and they felt like they were learning a lot more. But those who had mixed it up felt uh, pretty bad, as opposed to the others, because uh, they never knew what was coming, and they weren't as good in practice as those who knew what was coming. But then, when the actual play came, they become much better hitters, because when you play baseball, you don't know how the throw thrower is going to throw. Fastball, uh, curveball, or changeup. So, Varied practice is powerful, much more powerful than blocked practice, where you do the same thing over and over and over again. Very predictable. And how can we use this? Some examples uh, from me. Uh, and by the way, one more point. When you vary your practice, you're much more able to transfer your learning from uh, what you're learning to another field, another area of study, because this creates more connections in your brain, more novel connections. And now to the examples of how I vary my practice. When I, re uh, when I create these videos, it's a process. I read uh, the book, and I also mind map the book as I read. I uh, try to recall the main ideas on walks, and while I'm taking nappy patients, where I'm napping and imagining the key ideas, I write notes, six-page PDFs, which you can check out on my website, and I record those notes as mp3s, I record these videos without looking at notes, looking much at notes, and uh, I review 
what I uh, have learned over three months, 10 times over three months. This is varied practice. How can you vary your practice for your number one field of study? And want to make it a habit. Eventually these techniques will just become a habit, something you do without thinking about it. That's cool about it. Fourth big idea is rules plus structures. So um, they use two terms. Learning rules and structure building. So what is learning? R r I mean, rule learning is the term. It means that when you have an experience, any experience whatsoever, you're able to extract principles and rules that you then can use in later experiences for another time. An example is when I talk to people and I do all of the talking, I feel pretty bad about myself and little connection with the other person. But when I let them do most of the talking, to let them say the things that they've always wanted to say, but couldn't because no one would listen, then I experience much better connection and I feel much better about myself. And the rule I extract from that is, let other people do the talking and listen curiously, because that will create a much better connection with the other person. And that's something I can use for later experiences. Then we have structure building. This basically means being able to extract the key ideas and concepts from a mass of information and then eventually building a mental structure and uh, kind of a big perspective of how your subject, what your subject is all about. An example of how I use this is when I read books, I uh, connect the ideas to other authors. I ask myself, how does this connect to what other authors have written about? And uh, then I create connections. I can see what uh, ideas come, the authors come back to again and again and again. And that's a sign that those ideas are pretty important. So how can you use rule learning? Extract principles and rules from your experiences to use them for later times. And structure building. Connect what you learn with what you already know. Gain a bigger perspective. Fifth big idea, elaboration. What's elaboration? It's finding new layers of meaning in what you're learning. And how do you practice elaboration? You, there are three ways. You connect what it is you're learning to what you already know. And uh, the second one is uh, you explain what you learn in your own words, the key ideas, just like I'm doing in these uh, episodes without looking at notes. And the third one is relating them the, what you learn to your own life experiences. And that's really elaboration. You want to elaborate on what you're learning in order to create much more mental cues and connections in your brain because that will enable you to learn more. So how are you going to use elaboration? How can you make a habit of applying these ideas? Elaboration, rules and structures, create rules from your experiences and mental structures connecting what you learn to what you know. Very, vary your practice. Don't do the same thing over and over again. Only read. Try to do some other things. Write notes, create mind maps, try to teach them to other people, elaborate. The testing effect is actively retrieving what you learn from memory while keeping the book shut. Then you can go back and see if it was right. And rereading. It's not a good strategy. It wastes your time, gives you the illusions of fluency and mastery, but doesn't help you recall what you learn as powerfully as the testing effect. And last one is you won't remember things for a long time. Well, that's a quick look at Make It Stick by Peter Brown, Henry Rodiger, and Mark McDaniel. How? What's the number one idea that jumped out at you? That really resonated with you? You looked for it, right? Get clear on that one and think about the number one specific step you can take towards applying it to your life starting today. My tip is to make it a habit. Okay. If uh, you want to get more wisdom on Make It Stick, you can check out the note I have a link to in uh, the first line in the description, which leads you to my website. And uh, 
you can also check out uh, and I, I mean our next book will be How We Learn by Benedict Carey so thank you very much for listening and watching to and listening to and watching Make It Stick I'm looking forward to sharing more wisdom with you soon I want you to create an awesome day and let's actualize so we can give our most authentic selves in heroic service to the world. See ya. Hi, this is Fraude. You might know me from the work I do on YouTube, but I also want to tell you that you can gain access to a ton of more wisdom at my website, actualizer.me. And here, I focus all of my energies on answering the question, how can I help you actualize your life on a day-to-day -day basis? Because I know that even though you want to actualize your life and develop yourself, you're too busy to read all day. And that's why I'm all about sharing wisdom made practical. Fun, inspiring, and practical wisdom you can apply to your life immediately. And I do it through something I call Actualized Notes. They would include big ideas from 100 plus of the best and most transformative books and optimal living. It's notes from a fellow actualizer who wants to embody and help you embody these ideas more consistently in your life. And these Actualized Notes include 100 plus practical PDFs, which is six page PDFs with condensed wisdom ready for use. These are recorded into 100 plus MP3 guides because all AMs are recorded as MP3 so you can actualize on the go. I also create 10 to 20 minute ANTV episodes, which I upload on YouTube. And these are again converted into MP3 files so you can get access to them on the Actualize podcast. And all this work includes uh, 700 over 750 big ideas from ancient philosophers, modern scientists, and your own common sense, explained for easy use. You can gain instant access at my website, actualizer.me, and it, you can get a free 30-day trial, and then it will be 10 bucks per month. You can cancel it whenever you want, and I price the membership program so low, so you can in, tap into practical wisdom no matter how you're standing financially. All right. I hope you'll join me on this hero's journey of actualizing our potential. See ya.